الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد حج كبيان هو رأى last week we were up to the ziyarat of Medina Sharif and we mentioned that there is great virtue for visiting Medina Sharif visiting the Rawda of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one should make intention first that I'm going to visit my Rasul Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other things come after him whether it's Medina or it's Masjid Nabawi or other ziyarat everything after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and um, when a person reaches Medina Munawwara these, day, these days normally when the haji gets to Medina Munawwara <coughs> before Medina Munawwara there is a checkpoint and the coach goes inside and they serve some Medina dates and some snacks some bottle of water some croissant or bread and uh, this is a gift from Medina Munawwara and we should take it as a gift from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It is Rasulullah's tawajjuh which inspired them to make these arrangements. Mm. So if one thinks of it as a gift from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how, how he will feel that Rasulullah's hadiyah is here and he will eat with love and muhabbat. Every kajur and every sip of water he will take with love and muhabbat of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I remember my Hazrat, <coughs> Mawlana Yusuf Mutala sahab he used to say when we come here for uh, Ramadan and we sit in Masjid Nabawi at the time of Iftar and just make muraqaba and think that we are making Iftar with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his Masjid or oh, the whole Masjid is filled with uh, um, Zaireen who are busy in their du'as, in their salatu salam in their tilawat, in their zikr and tasbihat, and some in their muraqaba, some near the rawza of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And we just ponder and contemplate <coughs> that I am opening my rawza in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If just one makes just this thought, then it is enough for his safar to be wusul. His safar is accepted, no matter how much money he spent. But because of this concentration which he got, and this love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this thought of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all his money which he spent will be worthwhile. So, um, when we get to Medina Munawwara, we get this gift from there, we take it with love, muhabbat, keep it in good place, we eat as much as we want, and whatever is left over, keep it. We take it to our hotel, take it there. After that, the coach will move on, go to the pilgrim's reception center, and there, um, we have to wait. Sometimes half an hour, one hour, two hours, it can take a long time. There is um, a huge hall over there. And there is a <coughs> kiosk where you can buy some tea, coffee, and place for salat and istinja wuzu as well. So, uh, Hujjaji Kiram should go and relieve themselves. And after that, when the bus driver calls out, we should go to our coaches and <coughs> So when we get to <laughs> So when we get to Medina Munawara and before we get to the pilgrim reception, another one reception center where the passports are being sorted out, we have to stay there for a while, then uh, we proceed to our um, place. Over here it would be advisable if we can perform istinja, wuzu, because now we are going to enter the city of Rasulullah sallallahu so we should try and enter the city with wuzu, and with wuzu, and with concentration, and with salatu salam on our lips. And um, uh, when you are called, go and sit inside the coach and the coach will move on and now you will be entering the city. When you enter the city of Medina Munawara, you have to make the dua similar to that one which you made when you entered Makkah Mukarramah. Over here, you, 
you should say Allahumma inna hadha haramu nabiyyik fahrim luhumana aw basharatana ala an-nar waj'alhu lana amanan wa wiqayatan min al-'adhab that oh Allah this is the haram of your beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so make our flesh our bones our bodies haram upon jahannam and make this haram a source of aman and protection and safeguarding from the punishment of jahannam uh, for us make it a source of safeguarding from jahannam for us make this dua and keep yourself busy in durushari when you see gumbati khazra or the minarets of masjid nabawi increase your durushari and if you happen to when you are going to your hotel if you happen to pass by rauza sharifa then um, uh, as i mentioned earlier when bilal sahab sometimes he would just and get into uh, some ecstasy and he would get stand up and then he would read the rush sharif this is just something else which cannot be described it doesn't happen to everybody so only some some people you um, say salat and salam as salatu was salam alayka ya rasulullah salatu was salam alayka ya habibullah realize that now you are in the city of madina munawwara get to your hotel and uh, um, leave your belongings uh, settle down in your room how shower wear some nice clothes and put some perfume on and then proceed to masjid and nabawi sharif it is desirable mustahab to wear nice clothes wash yourself put perfume on sheikh yunus sahab one journey i was with him in umrah before ramadan <coughs> and sheikh was getting ready for juma or something he said kapde nikalo clothes house from back and he said no 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 this is brand new and i have uh, brought these for wearing in madina munawwara get the other pair out so he took the other pair and then he wore them and he went for them. he kept that brand new pair for madina munawwara he had specially made, uh, made had it sewn and prepared for uh, madina munawwara sure. and he wore it when he went to madina munawwara it looks really nice and uh, beautiful handsome in those new clothes and <coughs> this is our mashayikh's muhabbat and love and azmat for madina sharif so wear some nice new clothes and uh, go to a masjid nabawi sharif when you are going to masjid nabawi sharif give some sadaqa on the way if you can because allah says in the quran ya ayyuhal ladina amanu idha najaytum ar rasul faqaddimu bayna yadayna jawakum sadaqa ذلك خير لكم واطهر فان لم تجدوا فان الله غفور رحيم who you who have believed when you engage in conversation with rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam then before you start your conversation offer some sadaqa charity then allah reveal if you can't do it if you are unable to do so no problem allah is ghafur rahim hazrat ali karam allah wa jahu says when this ayat was revealed I was the first one to practice upon it. Before coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and having a meeting with him, conversation, I offered some sadaqa. <coughs> and then I talked to him. As soon as I had finished, Allah revealed another ayat in which Allah said, "Ashfaqtum an tuqaddimu bayna yadayn ajwaakum sadaqat fa idh lam taf'alu fa tab Allah 'alaykum wa ati'u Allah wa rasuluhu wa Allah khabirun bima ta'malun." That uh, are you fearful <coughs> that every time we come to talk to the prophet we have to give sadaqa we're going to get poor where are we going to get so much money from so allah said no problem you don't need to give sadaqa every time um uh, allah pak has turned towards you he has let you off obey allah and his rasul because allah is fully aware of whatever you do <coughs> so in light of this the first ayat give sadaqa if you can hazrat shaykhul hadith maulana muhammad zakaria rahmatullahi alayhi it was his habit that he would when he would arrive at madina munawwara before going to masjid masjid nabawi he would give some sadaqa and because during those times the bawab the door keepers were poor they were from yemen and uh, uh, they had very low wages so hazrat sheikh rahmatullah would give his sadaqa to them and they would be when they were, when they would see hazrat sheikh rahmatullah they would be really happy because they knew that he would give them something and at that time they would be very courteous and they would even take our slippers or shoes put them at a good place look after them and then when we would come out they would offer our shoes and slippers to us they would do khidmat of the hujjaj 
So as the Shaykh Ramadullah, he would normally give some sadaqa every time he would go for salat and salam. So before giving salat or salam, give some sadaqa. Then enter Masjid Nabawi <coughs> in the manner which you would enter any Masjid. Right foot first, then left foot, and with dua, Allahumma iftah li abu abu rahmatik bukhfil li zanubi. Bismillah, dakhaltu wa alayhi tawakkaltu wa nawaitu sunnah li atikah. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So read this salatu wa salam and this dua, and then enter Masjid Nabawi with utmost humbleness and uh, humility, and proceed towards the Riyazul Jannah. Riyazul Jannah is that area which is between Jali Mubarak and member of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let's say uh, if this is Qibla Sharif in Masjid al Nabawi and you come from this side then you will see there is the square Jali Mubarak like uh, a metal sort of net or something and which is, is square and it surrounds the Rawla of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with that Jali Mubarak and here is the members of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so this area is called Riyazul Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ma bayna bayti wa minbari rawdatum min Riyadil Jannah. That area between my house and my minbar is a garden from the gardens of Jannah. What is the meaning of this hadith? Number one, some ulama say it means that this piece of land was brought from Jannah and it will be taken back to Jannah. Others say that, number two, that when a person sits there, prays Salat, Zikr, Duru Sharif, then the time he spends in that area is exactly similar to his spending time in Jannah. So while he is there, it is as though he is sitting in Jannah. Because in Jannah is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So over here is also the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is extremely happy and pleased with this person who is sitting over here. That is why Rasulullah said that this is a piece of Jannah. And when you sit there, you do some a'mal of Jannah, Allah is very happy with you. He showers His mercy upon you, just as His rahmat and mercy is being showered upon those who are in Jannah. The Hur, the Malaika, the Ghilman, the Khuddam of Jannah who are busy in getting ready and preparing the Jannah. It is being, it is, Jannah is being created. It's already there. <coughs> there are and Ghilman and Khuddam Day. So Allah's Rahmah is descending upon them. Similarly, Allah's Rahmah is descending over here on this piece of Garden of Jannah. <coughs> so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, This area is Rawdatun min Riyazil Jannah. So when you go inside, get to Riyazul Jannah immediately when you go inside and pray to the Salat over there. Surah Qulya Yul Kafirun and Qul Huwalla if you can because Qulya Yul Kafirun is Baratun Minash Shikr Shirk and Qul Huwalla Hu Ahad is Surah Al Ikhlas Iqrar of Tawheed and Oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so read two rakats over here and make dua thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for bringing you here and if you can if you if you can make duas over here and if you can read some couplets while you are there Hazrat Mufti Shafi Sahib Rahmatullah is real nice nazam. Phir peish hai nazar gumbad e khazra hai haram hai. Phir peish hai nazar gumbad e khazra hai haram hai. Phir shukr e khuda saamne mihrab e nabi hai. Phir sar hai mera aur tera naqsh e qadam hai. Mihrab e nabi hai ke koi tour e tajalli. Mihrab e nabi hai ke koi tour e tajalli. دل شوق سے لبریز ہے اور آنکھ بھی نم ہے پھر بارگہ سیدِ کونین میں پہنچا دیکھ ہاں یہ ان کا کرم ان کا کرم ان کا کرم ہے پھر منتِ دربان کا اعزاز ملا ہے دیکھ ان کے غلاموں کا بھی کیا جاہو حشم ہے تو when he says this he is visualizing that moment that مغمبتِ خزرہ is in front of me now I am entering مسجد نبوی I can see that Riyazul Jannah, I can see the Mihrab of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he used to stand and pray. Because over here there is Mihrab of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can see where the Mihrab, where he used to pray. When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he extended the wall of Mihrab 
and he is, uh, stretched it so that where the Prophet ﷺ used to make sajda, that area would be covered and nobody could place his foot on the place where Rasulullah used to do sajda. So now when a person does sajda, his forehead will fall at the place where Rasulullah used to stand and his feet used to be. And it was kept in that order after that time and even in the time of the Turks. Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan, when he re, uh, renovated the masjid and made the uh, again, uh, so at that time uh, <coughs> he left it in that same state. And when you perform, uh, when you pray salat over there and perform sajda, your forehead will be at the place where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam feet were. So that mihrab is there, that mimbar is there. The original mimbar on which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to give khutbah. Um, that is not there at the moment because it only had three steps and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to climb on the third step when he used to give khutbah when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu became Khalifa he sat on the second step where, the Rasul, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to place his feet when Umar ibn al-Khattab made, was made Khalifa after Abu Bakr he used to sit on the first step where Abu Bakr's feet were and then when Umar passed away, <coughs> Osman came, he had no other place to sit. He had to climb onto the top. He said, where am I going to sit? There is no other place for me to sit. So he had to climb on the top. So this was the respect of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu for one another. So uh, that mimbal was there until the 5th century. And in the 5th century, once... Uh, there were a fire erupted in Masjid al Nabawi, and the whole interior of the Masjid was burnt in that fire. So during that time, the Mimbar Sharif was also uh, burnt, and now there is another new Mimbar, but it's at, at that spot where Rasulullah sallallahu Mimbar was. Today's Mimbar is quite big, I think it's got about 10-12 steps, and the Imam climbs on the top when he is giving the khutbah and it's made from aluminium and it's covered in a gold and silver color. So Rasulullah sallallahu has said that this spot is Riyazul Jannah. You go over there, you pray two rakat namaz, make some duas, and then proceed for salam. When you come out of Riyazul Jannah, there will be small, small entrances or exits. You go out of one of the exit and you come on uh, the wall of Qibla, like this is uh, the Qibla side so you come on the Qibla side and you slowly move towards Muajah Sharif <coughs> when you get to Muajah Sharif maybe <coughs> let's see if you can find some Naqsha over here <coughs> when you get to Muajah Sharif uh, yeah, it's Mahzur Sheikh Rahmatullah ये नक्शा नजर आ रहा है इसमें समझ नहीं पड़ेगी लेकिन हम समझाते हैं भी देखते हैं कोशिश करते हैं लेट्स से दिस इज बाबे जिब्रील यू एंटर्ड फ्रॉम हियर नजर आ रहा नहीं नजर आ टू मच रिफ्लेक्शन अच्छा लाइट का ठीक करें आप इसमें अच्छा दिस इज बाबे जिब्रील you enter from here and you come over here and this is Riyadhul Jannah. You pray two rakats over here. You see this area? This is Jali Mubarak. Yeah. Yeah, Jali Mubarak. Say and Rasa. So Yahasi, when you come inside, you pray two rakats over here somewhere in this area of Riyadhul Jannah. And then you proceed and you get come out exit from that uh, area into this area which is Qibla side. Today the Imam stands over here and over here is the mihrab of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and over here is the member of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Mihrabun Nabi member. This is the member, this is mihrab. So the area between this member and this Jari Mubarak, the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is called Riyazul Jannah. So you, for going for salam, you get out of here and then you move forward. And as you, you turn left and 
you come towards this side. Now this door of Masjid Nabawi is called Babu Salam. When there is too much rush, then they don't let you enter from here. These entrances are, are closed off. Police stand over here around me and they don't let you come out. They say you have to go from Babu Salam. So you have to get out of somewhere over here and come from this Babu Salam. And you come from this Babu Salam and there is a gate over here called Babu al -Baqi. So you get out of this gate and straight outside. <coughs> when you come over from this side, come here for Salatu Salam, this is where you have to stand. This is the Qabr of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qabr of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq, Qabr of Sayyiduna Abu Umar al Farooq So Rasulullah's at the front and where his chest or maybe his feet are is the head of Abu Bakr Siddiq and where Abu Bakr Siddiq's chest or feet are there is the head of Azad Umar and in this manner they are buried. We come from here, we stand over here and we say Salat and Salam to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while we are facing this Rosa Sharifah. And then we move a little bit and say Salam to Abu Bakr Siddiq, we move a little bit and say Salam to Umar Farooq and then we go back and say salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and then we stand over here and make du'as. <laughs> we can make du'a while we are facing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or we can turn towards Qibla and make du'a. However, it is among the adab that we don't turn our back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We either move towards this side or that side and then stand over here and then make du'a. So, yeah. Now, when you have recited your salat, <coughs> made your du'as, and you go for salat to salam, you must try and stand, you know, at a place where you are not disturbing anybody else. Because there will be many times there is a huge crowd and people are rushing. Mm -hmm. So stand behind as much as you can near the wall. And if you go at a time when there is not much rush, Normally, after namaz, there is too much rush. So don't go after namaz straight away, after salat. Wait for half an hour, 45 minutes. When the rush breaks down, mm. and the army is also uh, cooled down, and they let people in. So that, that time when you go, you get some time to stand and say salam with deep focus and attention. So you stand over there, in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and you say, As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah, As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habibullah, As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya khayr khalqi Allah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya khatam al-nabiyyin As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya shafi'a al-mudhnibin As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya sayyid al-anbiya wal-mursaleen As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya imam al-muttaqeen And in this way you change the attributes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and repeating the word salat and salam Both are mentioned from Mushayikh you can either say as-salatu was salamu or you can say just as-salamu. As-salamu alayka like you say in namaz, as-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So you can say that word as-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu while you are standing there. And keep reciting this, keep repeating. Don't shout and don't just keep quiet. Move your lips and say it with a faint voice as though you are in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and be like that when Sahabas were during his hayat, his life, when he was in his uh, with his physical body in this dunya. How Sahabas used to come and show respect. So similarly, show respect and say with uh, a faint voice, "Assalamu alaikum, ya Rasulullah." Don't shout because Allah Pak has told us not to do so. Ya ayyuhal ghazina manu. لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تنشطوا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون. O people, don't raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet صلّى الله عليه وسلم. And do not cry out and scream with your words in front of him. It is possible that your deeds may be wiped out. And you may not perceive and know. In the Ladina Yaguduna Swatahum in the Rasulilla, Ulaika Ladinam Tahan Allah, Kulu Bahumli Takwa, Lahum Makfiratum Wachrun Aziz. Surely those who lower their voices in the presence of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are the ones whose hearts Allah has tested for Takwa. 
they have passed their test for the taqwa lahum maghfiratun wa ajrun azim for them is maghfirat and ajr azim that's why we stand there and with a faint voice we recite salatu wassalamu alayka ya rasulullah maybe some mashayikh say read it 70 times this is for people <coughs> who who don't know how to do it how to recite so they say count 70 times the salatu wassalamu alayka ya rasulullah there are others who don't need to count, who just stand there and keep up with their salam. There are some who just say salam and then just keep quiet and they are engaged in the muraqwa. They don't have to say anything. They have this close attachment and they feel that closeness with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they feel that uh, like you know when you see some shua and rays of the sun coming out of the sun through the window into the room so they can feel that the faiz and barakat is coming out of the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they are getting portion and share of that faiz among with the other, along with the other zaireen who are <coughs> still over there, the millions of zaireen who are there. They are all getting this light from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this ruhani faiz and barakat they are getting from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they just stand there and they are focused uh, upon their ziyarat and upon their. Salam. So stay, say salam as much as you can. And when you feel you are alhamdulillah now satisfied, <coughs> then convey the salam of those who gave you, who, who, who told you to do so on their behalf. So we say, Ya Rasulullah, Dr. Mazhar Sahib has sent salam, Asif has sent salam, Shahzad has sent salam, Ghaznavi Sahib has sent salam, and all the students of Tafsir have sent salam. So we say that in these, and they are all hoping for your du'as, and your tawajju and your shafaat and your intercession on the day of Qiyamah. So please keep us in your tawajju and in your du'as and intercede for us on the day of Qiyamah. So you convey their salams. You don't need to say it in Arabic, you can say it in Urdu because Allah Pak has given Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the ability to understand all languages. He can understand all languages, he can speak in all languages. Uh, the rule of the alam e barzakh and the other world is, uh, is something else, it's another thing. So you will understand, you can say in your own language, with love and muhabbat, in English, in Urdu, in any language, and he will understand. So convey their salams, and uh, um, when you can have conveyed their salams, you can ask for shafaat for yourself self as well. That, oh Allah, um, while you were alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَلَوْ إِنْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا That if it was the case that when these munafiqeen wronged themselves, they came to you and they sought forgiveness from Allah and Rasul also sought forgiveness for them, asked for forgiveness for them, then they would surely have found Allah uh, after returning and Rahim and most <coughs> merciful. So, Ya Rasulullah, during your lifetime, whoever wrong made mistake would come to you, you would seek forgiveness for him and he would be forgiven. Many instances, a person makes a mistake and uh, uh, he kisses a woman who comes in his shop to buy something and immediately he realizes his mistakes. He rushes to Rasulullah and says, Ya Rasulullah, please clean me, I made a mistake, whatever. Saza and had you have to him, uh, inflict upon me, I am ready to take that saza. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa does not say anything. He says, go, pray, pray namaz. And he prays wuzu, does wuzu, prays namaz. Rasulullah also internally seeks forgiveness for him. After namaz, Allah Pak reveals the ayat, وَاقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَ إِنْ نَهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِنَ اللَّيْبِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُزِبْنَ السَّيَّاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَ لِلزَّاكِرِينَ That hasanat, wipe out siyyat, meaning his Sayyan, his bad deed is forgiven. So Rasulullah called him to you are forgiven. Many, many instances. And Rasulullah used to make istighfar for the Sahaba. Jabir radiallahu anhu was once with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a journey. And his camel had uh, stopped and was unable to proceed. So it had become lax and lazy and would not walk properly. Rasulullah's habit was that he would stay behind the caravan. So he could help anyone who needed help. So when he approached and Jabir was struggling with his camel, he asked, Jabir, what happened? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm struggling and he's giving me a hard time. It's not 
uh, running. So Rasulullah said, give me your stick. He took his stick and he smacked the uh, camel from behind and he just jumped and he started running. And then he started running so fast that Javid had to hold his rein, its rein. And Rasulullah was, um, his camel was also moving. He said, I have to keep holding it back because he was going ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu Now, uh, Rasulullah said, Javid, how is your camel? He said, Ya Rasulullah, Asabatu Barakatuka. Your barakat has uh, uh, come upon it and uh, uh, affected it. So Rasulullah said, Oh Javid, then sell me your camel. Wallahu yaghfirullah. Allah will forgive you. Give me your camel. So I said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't need to, you don't need to buy it. You can take it as a gift. And I said, No, 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 no. I'm going to buy it from you. Wallahu yaghfirullah. May Allah forgive you. Then Rasulullah was very fond of Javid. He started talking to him. And he, sort of in a teasing manner, he said, Can you send me, sell me it for one dirham? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you can take it for free. Rasulullah said, Two dirhams, five dirhams, ten dirhams. Now this is a very cheap price for a camel. And in the end, every time Rasulullah used to say, Wallahu yaghfirullah, Wallahu yaghfirullah, Wallahu yaghfirullah. Jabir says in the Hadith of Muslim that during that journey, Rasulullah made 25 istighfar for me. 25 oh, times he said, Wallahu yaghfirullah, Wallahu yaghfirullah, Wallahu yaghfirullah, Wallahu yaghfirullah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do istighfar for the Sahaba. Mm. Allah told him, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Seek forgiveness for your mistakes and for mu'mineen and mu'minat. So, you stand there, you say, Rasulullah, people used to come to you and you used to seek forgiveness for them and Allah would forgive them. You have gone from this dunya, I am also your sinful servant, your slave, your servant, uh, your ummati. I need forgiveness. Please seek forgiveness for me, so Allah forgive me as well. So you can say that over there in the presence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you stand there and you say your Salatu Salam, you convey the Salams of others, and you ask Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for his Shafaat and his intercession. And uh, in this manner, you say your salam. After you have satisfied yourself, you have to remember one thing. While you are doing that, don't try and touch the Jali Mubarak or kiss uh, Jali Mubarak. Um, um, this is not right. Mullah Ali Qari Ramatullah and others have said that kissing is for Hajar Yaswad alone, the black stone in um, Makkah Mukarrama. And besides that, other places should not be kissed. Mullah Ali Qari Ramatullah, Sheikh has narrated over here. So don't try and touch Jali Mubarak or Kis because some people over there they will be standing, they will say, Oh, you will be that shield, shield, this, that. Although, although um, many people do so out of love and muhabbat, they are just be you ikhtiyar. Know, they can't control themselves. So if, if it happens to someone and he uh, touches Jali Mubarak or Kis, it's his love and muhabbat. So he is uh, not under any rules and regulations. This is out. A beyond rules and regulations talk. Even though um, the Salafis or those Muraqibs who are standing over there, they don't let us touch um, um, Jali Mubarak and they don't let us make dua facing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards which I was subject I was coming that Imam Malik Ramadullah was asked by uh, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur that after I finish my salam and I have to make dua. Should I face Rawzai Sharifa or should I turn towards Qibla and make dua? So Imam Malik Ramatullah replied, How can you turn your back towards him? Let me read from here. The Sheikh has narrated this. <coughs> because his words are really moving. Once Khalifa Mansur asked Imam Malik Ramatullahi, when saying a prayer at the grave of Rasulullah sallam, should one face Nabi sallam or towards the Qibla? Imam Malik Ramatullahi replied, how can you possibly turn your face away from him when he is your medium, yani wasila, and also the wasila of your father Adam alayhi salam? Turn your face to him and beg his intercession on your behalf because Allah accepts his plea, his plea for you. 
Allama Zulqani Ramtullah says that the story already quoted has been reported by Qazi Iyaz through very authentic sources which would be wrong to reject. This is in reference to another story mentioned about. Imam Malik Ramtullah said that how can you turn your back towards him? Don't turn your back. He is your wasila. He is your medium. So face towards Rawda and make dua. To whom you are making dua? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or, and but through the intercession and shafaat of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And he will also make plea and speak up for you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So face him and make dua. Today, the, the muraqibs, they don't let us do that. If we are making dua like, the, hey, shit, shit, move, move, move. And they just move us from there. Or they turn us towards Qibla. Amazingly, if you go on YouTube, someone told me, you will see this clip of King Abdullah, the present king. He came to visit the uh, Ziyar Hawda of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he offered his salams. He raised his hands while facing Rawzai Sharifah. Imam Huzaifi is standing with him and all the other muraqibs are over there. Nobody said anything. He made his dua. Well, he never turned to us. He made dua while he was standing there, raising his hands. And <coughs> he touched the Jali Mubarak as well. And then he moved on. No. This shows that King Abdullah has love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he has muhabbat and ishq of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah protect him and take the khidmat of deen from him. So, um, over here, um, normally in the adab they say that don't do so intentionally. If out of love someone just touches it, okay. Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Muhammad Zakariya Rahmatullahi Ali, is practiced, narrated by our Hazrat Mawlana Yusuf Mutala Sahab Daman Parakatuhum, in the subject of Ishq of our Mashaykh with Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat, one of his bayan was very beautiful about Ishq of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said that. Uh, we used to take Hazrat Shaykh Rahmatullah in Masjid Nabawi and he would sit by Aqdami Ali and near Jali Mubarak. Now at that time there was, you know, this platform which they have made now, hmm. it was not there. And you could st sit right next to Jali Mubarak, right next to that area and nothing between you and the Jali Mubarak. So Hazrat Shaykh would sit over there and he would sit in Muraqaba for hours and hours, undistracted, totally focused in his Muraqaba. And at times, when Hazrat would notice that the haram is empty and nobody is there, Hazrat would quietly, secretly uh, creep his hand inside Jali Mubarak and whatever dust he can get, he would take the dust in his hand and he would rub it on his face. Allah that this Allah is the dust and ghubar of Rose Sharifa. Hazrat Maulana Khalid Ahmad Saharan Puri Hazrat mentioned this incident that one haji from India came with the Kafla caravan. His father was with him, who was elderly, and his father fell ill. And the caravan's departure time was near. He came, he was very disturbed. He said, he came to Hazrat, he said, Hazrat, please make dua. Our Kafla and caravan is departing. On those days, the journey will be on camels. So I can't be left behind on my own. I have to travel with them. But my father is ill, I don't know what to do, I can't leave him behind and I can't take him with the caravan because he can't travel in such a state, what should I do? Hazrat said, Inshallah we'll make dua, but I'll tell you something. You know the Riyazul Jannah area and the carpet that is uh, spread out there, when Masjid Nabawi is closed at night, um, it's about to close, go in there and you know whatever dust you can gather, you gather the dust from that Riyazul Jannah area, take it home and put it in some zamzam water or something, make some sort of kya kehte hai, lip, haji, paste. paste and put that paste on your father's face. Inshallah Allah will cure him. And he did that for two or three days and his father was cured and he was able to travel with the caravan. This is our Mashaykh's ishq and love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how this love has been taken away from us and we have been detached and distracted from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We need to attach ourselves with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this day and age. So, over here, while you are there, you know, make your salam with utmost honesty, sincerity, humility, humbleness 
and make dua, ask Rasulullah for his intercession. When you finish, uh, you move on to salam for Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. In, you say salam to him, that, oh Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, you are the Khalifa of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are the father-in-law of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are so fortunate. You gave your daughter to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was pleased with you. You are from the people of Jannah. We thank you for the service and khidmat of deen you did for this ummah and for during your khilafat and for the work you did. Uh, may Allah reward you and elevate your ranks. I uh, say salam to you from myself, from all those who send salams to you. Move on to Sayyidina Umar. That, oh Umar, you are also the father-in-law of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi You gave your daughter to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. <coughs> he was happy with you. We thank you for your services. May Allah shower His blessings and mercy and peace upon you. And then, uh, uh, salam from myself, from all those who have conveyed their salams, uh, sent their salams, and I am conveying them. After you finish, you move a few steps back to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say salams to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again. That Ya Rasulullah, uh, I am now going to my place of residence. Please remember me in your du'as. May Allah shower His mercy and salat and salam and peace and blessings upon you. And then after that you need to make the dua. When you are finished from all three salams. And it is better to make dua while you are facing Rawa. And if you can't do that, turn your back. But don't turn your back immediately uh, towards Rasulullah Move a little bit further on that side or this side and then make dua. And after you have finished your dua, take to make your way out of Masjid Nabawi. Some ulama have said, that after Salatu Salam, go back to Riyazul Jannah and try and pray some rakats <coughs> at special places. Like, for example, Ustuwane Abu Lubaba, Ustuwane Aisha, Ustuwane Haras, Ustuwane Wufud. There are some pillars in Masjid Nabawi upon which it is written in green, uh, a, a golden writings on green background. That this is Ustuwane Abu Lubaba, this is Ustuwane Aisha. So if you can find some space there, pray two rakats. There is great significance of those uh, <coughs> pillars. Like for example, Ustuwane, oh, uh, Abu Lubaba is that place where Abu Lubaba al-Ansari was accepted. He had made a mistake at the battle of Banu Quraiza. He uh, sort of indicated to Banu Quraiza what would happen to them if they agreed uh, for Sa'd ibn Mu'az to be their judge. It's a long story. During Ghazwai Khandaq, in the year 5th after Hijrah, 10,000 mushriks came to crush Medina. And they told Banu Quraiza to betray Muslims and uh, ally with them. So they would attack from that side, Quraiza from this side, and Muslims could be crushed in between. So Banu Quraiza agreed, they betrayed, they broke their treaty, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will was that the uh, comrades were defeated, Ahzab, and they had to go away. And Banu Quraiza were left on their own. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that you have to deal with Banu Quraiza now. So he immediately rushed towards the area of Banu Quraiza, surrounded them, for, and they, they, uh, surround, they, they, they protected themselves in their fort, castle, for maybe 15-20 days and after that they agreed to do some uh, sulah and they said the judge between us should be Sa'd ibn Mu'az because during the time of Jahiliya they had friendship with Sa'd ibn Mu'az they thought he would be lenient towards us so they said we want to go on but we want to make mashura with Abu Lubaba first because he was also our friend so they called upon Abu Lubaba so Abu Lubaba and Sa'd went and they said that look we are thinking of going on the faisla and judgment of Sa'd ibn Mu'az. What do you reckon? So Abu Lubaba said, Sa'd ibn Mu'az, if he made a judge, he's going to finish you off. And he immediately realized, what did I do? I shouldn't have said that. It's a betrayal. I have betrayed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he immediately left that scene, stood up and ran away. And rather than going to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was so remorseful and regretful that he went to Masjid Nabawi and Medina Munawara, which was about 3-4 miles. He rushed to Medina Munawara. And he came to Masjid Nabawi, and he tied himself with that pillar in Masjid Nabawi. And he said, I, I, I'll either die over here, 
or Allah accepts my tawbah, one of the two things will happen. If he doesn't accept my tawbah, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to let myself lose, I'm going to stay here until I die. And he tied himself. He was sincere in his tawbah. And uh, uh, the battle over there finished. Rasulullah came back. After about five to seven days, Abu Baba was still there. Allah tested him. And he was there, he was just sort of going to die, pass away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed some ayat in the Quran. He accepted the tawbah of Abu Baba al Ansari. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تخونوا الله والرسول وتخونوا أماناتكم وأنتم تعلمون وعلموا أنما أموالكم وأولادكم فتنة وأن الله عنده وجل نظيم أن لقد تاب الله والنبي والمهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوه في ساعة العسرة So in those ayat Allah mentioned his tawbah So Rasulullah came and untied the rope which he tied himself and he said Allah has accepted your tawbah So that ustawana pillar is still there. So if you go and pray over there, <coughs> Allah will accept your tawbah as well. It's a blessed place. Then that is the Ustawana of Salir. This is the place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa bedding was placed during the time of Atikaf. There is a pillar now over there. When he used to perform Atikaf, his bedding would be placed over there where Ustawana Salir is. Then there is Ustawana Tahajjud. It's also named as Ustawana Aisha. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to pray tahajjud uh, near that sutu. And another ustuwana is named ustuwana Aisha. It's named ustuwana Aisha because once Aisha radiallahu anha said, there is a place in this masjid where if I were to mention the virtue of praying salat over there, then people would uh, fight for uh, getting some place to pray over there. So I'm not going to tell because there will be arguments and fights for him. And it is said that she told her nephew Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu And Abdullah ibn Zubair used to pray over there. Mm -hmm. So then people realized that this is the spot towards which she was indicating. So it, it's named Ustwane Aisha. And then there is Ustwane Wufud. There is a prayer where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would greet the Wufud and delegations from other countries. So there was a special place, he would go and sit with them over there. And then there is Ustwane Haras. Haras means Chokhi Dari, night duty, and uh, a protective protection. So Sahabas would come and spend the night over there protecting the house of Rasulullah and keeping a watch throughout the night. In the beginning, until Allah revealed, Wallahu Yasimuka Minan Nas. So that's named Ustwane Haras. So these are few pillars in that area of. Riyazul Jannah. So you can go over there, pray some two two rakats here and there, and get the sawab of praying there. Also, pray two rakats at the place of Ashab e Sufa. Because Ashab e Sufa were blessed people, they were Sufi, Buzrugs, Sahaba. Sometimes they would be between 70 to 100, 200. Sometimes they would go up to 300. These were people who would migrate from their places. They would have no one in Medina Munawara. They would just stay in Medina, in Sufa, near Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stay in his company, benefit from him. That's why they were named ashab -e sufa So where they used to reside, they used to stay, that is called ashab -e sufa place. So it's at the back of Riyazul Jannah, pray uh, Abu Jali Mubarak, pray to Rakat there. These are some special places. Other than these, there are other places in inside the Masjid Nabawi to visit as well. For example, the uh, gate of... Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, which is on the right side, near Babu Salam, Khawkhatu Abu Bakr ibn Siddiq. Abu Bakr Siddiq's house was over there, and he would come out of his house and wait for Rasulullah. When Rasulullah would come out of his house from this side, they would both look at one another and smile, and then Rasulullah would proceed towards the Musalla. Abu Bakr would come and stand behind him in the first half, and that's how namaz would take place. So that was where the house of Abu Bakr Siddiq was. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during his last days, he said, all the doors opening inside Masjid Nabawi should be closed down, except for the door of Abu Bakr Siddiq. This was an indication that he is going to be my Khalifa, so he will need to come in and out of Masjid Nabawi. So his doors should be left, other doors opening in Masjid Nabawi should be closed off, and they should, people should use the other door of the other side. So, uh, that place, special place of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu's house, and other places, 
in that area is the house of Say Abu Ayyub and Sari radiallahu anhu, where Rasulullah stayed for seven months as a guest. So uh, that is now, I think, it's included in Masjid Nabawi. If you can get someone uh, who is in from Medina Munawwara, he might be able to take you around and show you the exact location of the house of Abu Ayyub and Sari radiallahu anhu. Also, on the left hand side, there is the place where. Abu Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam used to come and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to make door with him of Qur'an in Ramadan. So that area. Also when you come out of Masjid Nabawi, there is Musalla al Janais. You just visit that place, you look at it, you, know, you don't need to pray anything over there, but you can just understand that Rasulullah used to pray Janazah outside Masjid Nabawi, not inside, because that was the place called Musalla al Janais. These are just some places within Masjid Nabawi and its area vicinity. Then, <laughs> you also go to Ziyarat of Baqiwul Gharkhat. When you go to Ziyarat of Baqiwul Gharkhat, you enter inside the gates. As you enter in the gates, on your uh, right hand side, in front of you, are the Mazarat and the graves of Ahlul Bayt in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyida Fatimah Zahra radiallahu anha, Sayyiduna Abbas radiallahu anhu, Sayyiduna Hassan radiallahu anhu, and some say the head of Sayyiduna Hussain radiallahu anhu is also here, Imam Zainul Abidin. All these family members of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are buried over here. So for, when you enter, you first say salam to them. Assalamu alaikum ya ahlul bayt wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, you, you say salam to all ahlul baqi first, the whole of baqi al gharqat. Uh, as soon as you enter the gate, assalamu alaikum um, ya ahlul gharqat, dar qawm mu'minin, antum salafuna wa inna insha Allah bikum lahiqun. يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ وَيَرْحَمُ اللَّهُ الْمُسْتَقْدِمِينَ مِنَّا وَالْمُسْتَخِينَ It's written over there on big boards. So you read that salam. Say salam to all Baqi wal Gharqad. Then you go to Ahl Bayt. Say salam to them. And then you move on. Uh, on or when you turn towards your left, there are the graves of small, small, uh, seven, six, seven stones. The, 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 that, there is the graves of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's I think nine wives are buried over there. Khadija radiallahu anha is in Makkah. Yeah. Azal Maymuna radiallahu anha is in Sarif. And the other nine wives are in Baqi ul Gharqat. And, this, and you, as you move on, there are four small stones. There, is, there are the graves of the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the name of Hazrat yeah. Zainab, Hazrat Raqiyah, Hazrat Umm Kulsum. They are uh, buried over there. And then moving on, there is the grave of Imam Nafi' who was the uh, imam uh, who was at first the freed slave of Abdullah ibn Umar and he was a great imam of hadith and tafsir and fiqh she's buried imam malik is buried beside him you say salam to both of them and then you move on and you go pass by the grave of ibrahim son of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was a little boy say salam to him and move on to you have to go quite a distance to the grave of sayyidina usman ibn affan you say salam to Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu and just along that side there is the grave of Sayyiduna Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu and then on your return you come from the other side there is the graves of uh, Shuhadas of Harra uh, in the year 61 Yazid bin Muawiyah sent an army to attack the people of Medina and the people of Medina tried to defend themselves but they were defeated and many became shaheed they are buried in that area Shuhada of Harra then you move on and you come to the grave of Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib, the poopy and uh, uh, auntie of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And also there is the grave of Fatima bint Asad, the uh, mother of Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. So she is buried. So you say salam to all these people. And if you can, if someone is there, they can guide you or you can take some naqsha with you and it will be helpful. So uh, you say salam to them. And then there are other places of visiting in Medina Munawwara like um, Shuhadai Uhad. You go to Shuhadai Uhad, 70 Shuhadas, Sayyidu Shuhada Hamza radiallahu anhu. You say salam to them. And you go to Khandaq, where Khandaq battle took place. There were seven masajid over there, but they have been broken down and just one big one is made over there. And also there are seven wells in around Medina Munawwara from which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself drank water. Bire uh, Aris, Bire Ghars, Bire Buda'a, Bire Ha, and Bire uh, Ruma. So Bir means well, and these others are their names. Bire Aris is the one 
uh, in which from which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to normally drink. And once Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting over here, and he dropped some of his saliva inside that river, uh, inside that well as well. So if you, you get the barakat of that water, you can drink from that water. People used to go drink and fill some bottles from there. At the moment now. Saudis have blocked it down and they don't let you uh, get into that area. So we just, uh, you know, visit it from a distance and move on. So Biri Adis, it is that same uh, well in which the anguti and ring of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fell and it disappeared. The ring of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on which was engraved Muhammad Rasul Allah, in such a way that Muhammad at the bottom, Rasul on top, and Allah on top, because. Uh, um, this was due to show adab and respect to the name of Allah. Rasulullah did not write his name on top Muhammad Rasulullah. He wrote Muhammad Rasul Allah. So uh, this ring of his, uh, he used to wear it during his time. And after his death, it was passed on to his Khalifa Abu Bakr. Then he passed it on to his Khalifa Umar, and he passed it on to his Khalifa Usman. So Usman radiallahu anhu was once sitting on Biriyadis, and he is taking out the ring, and uh, wearing it, taking it out, wearing it, and somehow suddenly it fell, and it went died inside the well. So Usman radiallahu anhu uh, exhorted himself in somehow bringing it out. He uh, dried out, opened up the whole well, and took the whole water out, but he couldn't find that thing, and it disappeared, and it was lost. So <coughs> that was the, uh, uh, um, that is be the Aris, and uh, um, so we must try and take drink water from there. Also, Biri Ghars and Biri Ruma, Biri Buda'a, Biri Ha, these are wells from which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to drink and water was brought for him. Um, Suqiya is another well over there. If we come, it's hard. Other places to visit are masjid e quba and masjid e Qiblatain, they take us to visit. masjid e quba there is virtue for going masjid e quba on Saturday. If you go, perform two rakats umrah, you get sawab of maqbool, I think Mukbul Hajj and Umrah of Sabi Asir Umrah. Umrah. Mukbul Umrah. So you get Sawab of Mukbul Umrah, uh, accepted Umrah, if you go and pray two rakats over there. So if you can do so, um, it is better on Saturday, if not any other day. And um, so this is regarding the visit to Masjid Quba. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi would sometimes go walking to Masjid Quba and sometimes riding. Normally he would go walking. That is. Because Rasulullah was a very nice person and he was very grateful. And because the people of Quba, <coughs> they gave him, they provided residence for him for two weeks, for 14 days when he migrated. They made him feel at home. So he stayed there for two weeks and then he came to the city of Medina Munawara. So he remembered their favor and ihsan and uh, to repay them, he would visit them every Saturday, once a week. He would go sit with them, people of Quba would gather around him and they would feel nice and then after a while, after praying namaz, he would come back. So he said there is virtue for praying Salat in Masjid Quba. Pray there, pray there. Masjid Qiblatain, there is no special virtue for praying in Masjid Qiblatain. But it's just a historical place. King Fahad made that Masjid. When we went many years ago, 20 years ago, there was only a small Masjid over there. But now King Fahad has made it a big Masjid and there is big car park. People go to visit Masjid Qibla and go. The Masjid Qibla is that place in which Namaz was prayed to two Qiblas. Not by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but by some Sahaba Rizwan Allah Alaihi Wasallam. That uh, Qibla was turned uh, from Baitul Maqdis to Baitullah Sharif. Now they are both in opposite direction. Medina Munawara is in middle, Makkah is in the south, and Baitul Maqdis, Jerusalem is in the north. So when Rasulullah migrated from Makkah to Madinah, there were Jews around the area of Medina. So Allah wanted to bring them closer and make friendship with them. So he said that uh, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi when you are praying, pray towards Jerusalem. So he would can be, uh, come closer, become closer and make friendship with them. But after 16, 17 months, they stayed as stubborn as they were. And their stubbornness increased rather than <coughs> decreasing and being lenient. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, that's it now. You don't need to uh, be soft with them. Turn your face towards Qibla now. Kaabatullah Sharif. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned his face towards Baitullah Sharif. 
<coughs> of someone who had prayed Salat with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam towards Baytullah, he left Masjid Nabawi and he was passing this by this area where Masjid Qibla is, and people were praying Salat over there, and there was one Imam and maybe three four Muqtadis. So they were facing um, Baytul Maqdis and they had prayed two rakats and they were in the in their third rakat, the ruku of their third rakat. So this person passed by and said, Oh, what are you doing? Why you are praying towards Baytul Maqdis? The Qibla has been turned towards Kaabatullah Sharif, turned towards Kaabatullah Sharif. So in their namaz, in the state of ruku, the Imam moved to this side and the Muqtadis also moved. And then they completed their other two rakats. So one namaz was prayed in two directions. That's why it's called Masjid of Qiblatayn, the Masjid of two Qiblas. So uh, we go there and visit and remember this incident of Masjid of Qiblatayn. I don't know, but sometimes we feel a little bit of suspicious, you know, when you get a bit cynical, why they are paying so much importance to Masjid of Qiblatayn. And the Rasulullah did not pray over there. But when we think, you know, once I went for bayan to one masjid, and um, after the Friday Juma bayan, this young man comes to me and he says that, Murana sahab, why is there so much naskh and abrogation in the Quran? I said, what do you mean? He says, so many mansukh, mansukh, ahkam, like Qibla is mansukh, and this is mansukh. Why does Allah mansukh? Do Allah, does Allah not know that he had to give this order? Does he make mistakes? Does he forget? <coughs> so I understood when he was coming from, I said, oh, 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 I said, first of all, we need to understand the meaning of naskh and abrogation. The meaning of naskh is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives some order for a particular amount of time. When that time finishes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now this is the order. Like a hakim, doctor, he gives medicine for some term, and after one month, or a, one week, one month, he changes that medicine. Because he uh, real sees the change of condition of that uh, sickly person. So similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some reason gives one command for a, to a, a certain amount. And then Allah changes that uh, a command. And <coughs> this is nas, this is abrogation. And second thing is, don't think that the whole Quran is filled with abrogation. The Messiah that are abrogated are... Uh, a, a, a few you can count them on your fingers maybe just Qibla, Muta'a and a few other Ahkam otherwise there is not so much Nas so he said that oh, oh Mawlana Sahib you, you have taken some weight off my shoulders I am studying Islamic studies in my university and the professor during the Islamic study he put on this objection that in Islam there is Nas then why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abrogate Ahkam. This is not possible. Does Allah make mistake and he forget? So I, he created this doubt in my mind. And uh, you know, it, it was boggling my mind. But now you, I told him that, look, this Nasq and abrogation is not just in Islam. It's in the other uh, books as well. It's in Torah, it's in Injil, it's in the uh, other Shariats as well. So he, does, he has no right to make this objection. So um, sometimes we think that they pay importance to the Masjid Qiblain because it can raise this objection and doubt in the minds of the visitors. Otherwise, there is no virtue like Masjid Quba has virtue of uh, uh, two, two rakats maqbul. There is no virtue for Masjid Qibla. Then you will get sawab of Umrah or anything. But people, you know, keep make these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I hope my, my andaza and my guessing is wrong. But there are some suspicions and doubt over there behind this. Anyhow, visit these sites and visit other places. Whole Medina Munawara is placed with Barakat. Mm. There are many things left in Medina Munawara. Try and pray all your namaz with jamaat. Forty namaz with jamaat, and you get two certificates: of freedom from nifaq and freedom from jahannam. Also, um, uh, read as much Quran as you can, read as much Durood Sharif as you can. Spend max maximum time in Masjid Nabawi, and these are the things to do in Masjid Nabawi. And keep in your mind that you are with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and be respectful. Don't do anything disrespectful to Masjid Nabawi or to Madinah Munawwara. And these are something. Hazrat Sheikh Ramatullah has mentioned in his book 61 adab of uh, ziyarat of Masjid Nabawi Sharif. So before you go, read this and read the adab of Masjid Nabawi. Very nice stories in here as well. Read those stories and you will feel that love of Madinah Munawwara. 
May Allah give us the fear to practice. Jazakallah.